PMPL to be held online instead of LAN, Call of Duty Warzone will be getting 4-man squad, CD Projekt Red working on a new Witcher title and so much more. Welcome to Top Gaming News. My name is Given Madness. Make sure to hit that like button and click on subscribe and let's just jump right into it. The COVID-19 virus has been growing at an immense rate because of which a number of events are being cancelled. Government is also shutting down malls and theatres to prevent social gatherings and even some offices are being closed. Now, of course, this has taken a big toll on gaming itself with a lot of events being shut down. One of them is E3, which I will be talking about later. But PMPL, which is known as PUBG Mobile Premier League 2020 South Asia, will be now converted into an online tournament instead of being a LAN tournament. Now, this event was supposed to launch at 12th March, but instead has been moved towards 19th of March, that is this Thursday. PUBG Mobile has also released an official statement stating that the health and safety of players as well as staff members is their first priority and that's why they're moving it into an online tournament instead. Now the fans will be able to watch the tournament live on PUBG Mobile's official channel on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch. The group structure has officially been revealed where TSM which is a North American organization which has partnered with Entity Gaming and therefore forming TSM Entity is in Group A. Team Fnatic is in Group D and Team Soul in Group B. I think if possible, every LAN tournament should be converted into online tournament if you really want that tournament to happen. Because it's very important to take care of your health at this very moment, even though some people believe that India has so much heat that coronavirus cannot grow, but still you should take at least some kind of precautions. Now it has also been confirmed that Overwatch League and Call of Duty League will be completely cancelled where some of the matches that are scheduled in April and March for Overwatch will still be played but after April all of those matches will be cancelled. Now obviously this is taking a heavy toll on gaming and not only gaming in every single industry. So I hope all the gamers are taking some precautions and it's better to avoid social gatherings at this very moment. Umumba Esports, which is a Mumbai based organization, is going to hang up CSGO division due to lack of tournaments. This organization has also bid farewell to Dota 2, stating that it has a dull future in terms of an esport title. Now, taking out two PC esports title is a clear indication that things are moving in a different way. Of course, it might be possible that they're moving towards mobile esports since PUBG Mobile has been growing at a faster rate. Even Entity Gaming has taken its departure from CSGO after ESL Winter Land Finale. Now this is mostly because less amount of viewers are watching these kind of tournaments and the growth is not that much as compared to PUBG Mobile where the growth of viewers are increasing every single time and there's a lot of people watching that game instead. And it looks like these organizations want to join the bandwagon of PUBG Mobile as well. What do you think about the esports organization taking departures from games like CSGO and Dota 2? Let me know all of that in the comments below. Now moving on to E3 which has been cancelled altogether and some people actually speculated this is going to happen basing on the situation we are currently in but it seems like they are looking for online experience instead so that industry announcements can be done. Xbox head Phil Spencer has informed about Xbox Digital but the dates have not been announced yet and same goes for Ubisoft who in collaboration with ESA are looking for an online event. Now of course this is a terrible news for every gamer out there because E3 marks a very important platform for every studio to promote their next project, announcements and major updates. Well, a popular video game journalist Jason Schreier has told that Warner Brothers were supposed to make an announcement at E3 with Warner Brothers Games preparing to host E3 press conference for the very first time. Now, of course, Warner Brothers Games are also behind the games of Batman, but it seems like they were supposed to announce a new Batman game as well as a new Harry Potter game, with Kotaku even pointing out a rumor based on a new Harry Potter open world game with the screenshot that was leaked online. Now since E3 has been cancelled, it has yet to be seen what will happen for Warner Brothers games based on the announcements they were supposed to make at E3. Call of Duty Warzone came out earlier this week and in only 24 hours it has over 6 million players. That is a lot of people. The game is a free to play battle royale game as I mentioned in my previous news and is actually fun to play. Now last week I told you that this game will have around 200 players but instead we are having 150 players. Well, Infinity Ward's co-head has actually told that they will be bringing 200 players in the game and even there will be 4-man squad and 5-man squad added to the game. Now, of course, they don't want to add all of this update in the game as soon as possible because they want to make sure that this works as smoothly as possible. 
Now, of course, for some people, the map seems to be too big and the game seems to be too long. And even for some people, it's not a battle royale game. I don't know what, what is that all about. But hopefully they get inspired by Fortnite and Apex Legends by adding events and activities in the game in the future. Well, the map is really huge because it's a combination of different multiplayer games that are already present in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now, one thing you have to take a look out for is snipers who go all the way at the top of the building to snipe you out. But the most irritating thing is, I guess, the kill streaks in the game because when the circles get very small, everybody uses the kill streak so that, well, they win the game. Now, of course, if you're not having any cover, mark my words, you will definitely die. Now one thing I really like in this game is the cash system where you can get the cash anywhere you want but you can also earn more cash if you do small activities in the game that is some contracts that you can complete within the battle royale game itself. Now with the help of this cash you can buy a number of things one of them is loadout drop where you can choose your own loadout you created in modern warfare which I think is much better to use. Now a lot of people are still experiencing crashes and DirectX issues which to be honest was there ever since Modern Warfare was launched. Some things you can do to improve that is disabling shadow play from GeForce Experience and maybe try to play in full screen borderless mode because to be honest that helped me out a lot. What do you guys think about Warzone? Are you still playing it? Are you having fun? Let me know all of that in the comments below. Now let's talk about some cool games that came out very recently. One of them is State of Decay 2 which came out on Steam with the Juggernaut edition. Now this is a sequel to State of Decay and it is a survival shooter game where you have to take care of the community you are a part of and not only that you can take some of the members from the community and go over missions and also shoot the zombies. And the best thing about this game is you can play with your friends as well. Now it seems like some people are having trouble playing this game with their friends because apparently the multiplayer asks for an Xbox account even though it's on Steam, which does not make any sense. Now those who own this game in Xbox Game Pass can get a free upgrade to Juggernaut Edition. All you have to do is reinstall the game, meaning you have to delete the game and re-download it again, which is a very weird form of update. Another game that came out is Ori and the Will of the Wisps which is a direct sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest and if you haven't played that game you should definitely check it out. It is one of the most beautiful experience that you can ever get in a game like this with an amazing soundtrack. And that same magic is still present in Ori and the Will of the Wisp which is right now available on Steam at just $6.99 and also is available on Xbox Game Pass where I will be playing it. Ori who is the protagonist will have a major upgrade in this game with having swords and finding even bigger enemies twice the size of the first game. It's gonna be a very frustrating and a beautiful experience at the same time. Looks like we're gonna have a new Prince of Persia game. Wait wait that's, that's not Prince of Persia. That's For Honor. What? For Honor has now a new crossover event where it will have Prince of Persia himself in it. But you will have to fight that prince because you're not playing as him. The series will go till April 2nd where you will fight the creatures from the Prince of Persia games and the prince himself who will use his time bending powers to a greater extent. Not only that from March 19th, prince will be replaced from Dark Prince from the Two Thrones. Which to be honest looks more like a villain to me because of his design and his, his chain that he has with him. Now there has been no detail that he will be using his chain or anything else in the game. Now the game will have 26 Prince of Persia themed weapons and will also include two new outfits. One of them is Sand Wraith from Warrior Within and the other is Ratash from Forgotten Sands. Pretty cool stuff. Now this isn't the first time they have done such a crossover because back in 2018 they included Ezio Auditore and Cesar Borgia in the game. But with Prince of Persia coming back in 3D for the first time, can we actually say that a new Prince of Persia game is confirmed? Please Ubisoft? But it looks like CD Projekt Red plans on making a bigger game after Cyberpunk 2077 based on the Witcher universe. CD Projekt Red's president has told that they are already working on a new single player game and it has a relatively clear concept. But it will be a while till they start production on that game because first of all they have to release Cyberpunk 2077, then a major part of the team will go to a Cyberpunk multiplayer and then a small part of the team is going to work on that single player game. It has also been told that they are interested in working on both Witcher and Cyberpunk universes to make more new games. And even CD Projekt Red has told in the past that if a new game of Witcher comes out, it won't be Witcher 4 because it won't be continuing the story of Geralt as it ended in The Witcher 3. Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed to September 17th instead of an April 16th release date because they wanted to do some more playtests and more polishing so that everybody can have fun with this game without any issues. 
How many of you are excited about Cyberpunk 2077 and what do you think about a possible new Witcher game? Let me know all of that in the comments below. Well those were the top gaming news of the week. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Make sure you hit the like button and comment down below about any news that we just discussed and make sure to subscribe to Gamer Connect for more videos coming every single week. Follow us on social media to know everything about Gamer Connect and also join Gamer Connect community on Facebook to be a part of the GC Army.